So you've spent lots of time and effort getting Home Assistant up and running. You've got some lovely automations. Your family are proud of you. You've done a great job. And then all of, all of a sudden, some of them start failing. Some batteries may have run out in some devices. Some devices may have become unavailable. Or maybe there's just some problems with some of the attributes in some of the automations. If you'd like to find out how you can fix some of these things, then stick around and watch the video. Thanks for watching. So there's three things I'm going to cover in this video. The first one is a blueprint that we're going to add into Home, uh, home Assistant. Uh, the blueprint is going to give us the capability to create an automation that will send you a notification when uh, a battery is running low on one of your smart devices. The second one is um, a card a new hacks integration card that we're going to add in to home assistant and on that card it'll show you the status of all of the batteries in your home assistant environment so you can easily see which um, what the battery level is on all those different devices so the third thing that we'll look at is um, an integration called the watchman and basically that runs as an integration in home assistant and it collects all the entities such as sensors timers input selectors, scans your YAML configuration files as well as your actions to see if there's anything missing or broken uh, or anything that's unavailable. And then it'll send you a report um, or a notification if there's an issue. So it may be that you don't need to run that uh, this that often, but it's useful to know and have the peace of mind that everything's working as it should be so you'll see later on in the video i'm running this and i do find three different errors in mine two are actually um to do with the new automation that i've just set up and the um, entities are in an unknown state because they haven't been used before they're buttons and the other one was actually an incorrectly named uh, entity in one of my actions that obviously was never working properly so i managed to fix that so it's good it worked well so hopefully that'll be of use for you um, enjoy the video thanks for watching let's start then by adding the low battery blueprint so we're going to settings automations and click on blueprints you can see the three um, blueprints that are out of the box and we need to add a new one so it's taken us to an external site and we're going to search for the low battery blueprint. So once we've discovered that, we can click on it and we can select import blueprint to my home assistant. Make sure the IP address is correct. If not, you'll need to change that. We can now preview the blueprint. Check it's the one that we want and then import the blueprint into our own home assistant and now we've got that blueprint available to consume so what we'll do in the next section is we'll go through the configuration of that let's configure the low battery notification actions then so you can see here we've got some triggers you can use a button so you could just press a button to um, use this as an automation I'm not going to do that I'm going to um, use t a time-based notification so you can have a button helper there so I've, I've enabled mine for time so at two o'clock every Sunday I'll get a notification on my phone um, with the status of any batteries that are running low so if we look at the battery settings so I've left it at the default which is 20% you can obviously change that to whatever you like and then there's some options to exclude battery sensors and we'll look at that in a minute so from a notification point of view there's various options that you can choose uh, enable device notification enable device notification plus OK confirmation message and enable notification in the UI so you'll actually get a message and in the notifications interface on your uh, home assistant dashboard as well um, so I'm getting a notification sent to my mobile phone and the title is warning 
low battery notification. I've selected option two here because um, you'll see in a minute that I've set up two automations, one for my battery's low level and then another one for unavailability. If the system finds, if the automation finds that everything's okay, you'll just get an okay message. So under actions, so what you can do here is add an action to your to-do list in your calendar, for example. I've chosen not to do that, but you could certainly have a play around with that and see if it's something that you want to use. So again, I, I started having a look at whether I could broadcast a message to my Google Home devices um, to let me know when batteries have become available. I've decided not to go with that because it's quite annoying, but there's some code here that you could use just to get a notification. Uh, so you can see my example on the bottom right there, but there's obviously some examples on the left-hand side there of the variables that you could use. So if we run this action, then let's see what it does. So you'll see in the bottom left hand corner under notifications, I've now got a message to say that there's three wireless temperature sensors and my son's mobile phone is low. I don't want to know about my son's mobile phone. He can deal with charging that himself. So what I'll need to do is add an exclusion in here. So I'm going to exclude Jack's mobile phone from the notification of low battery warning. If we run that again, this time we'll find that we get the same message but the, with the exclusion of Jack's mobile phone. Let's configure another notification using the same low battery blueprint. So you'll see here in my automations, I've got two notifications, two automations, one for low battery and one for sensor availability. So the reason I've had to create two is because I want them to run at different times. So for my sensor and available automation, I want it to run every day at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, just so I, it can more easily and quickly be identified if a sensor has become available, unavailable, I should say. So I've still got the same settings in the battery status, um, which aren't really used for this notification. Um, I'm getting a notification still sent to my mobile phone and also to the user interface. But this time I've selected option three from the message, which is around unavailability of sensors. I'm not using the buttons and I'm not using the actions. Um, so everything's else is pretty much the same. It's just the time and the fact that I'm only being notified on sensors. So you see here I've got two sensors that are unavailable uh, and this is a problem I need to fix in my environment. So those sensors are at um, remote locations, so out in the garage and out on the driveway. So I need to improve my uh, Zigbee network reach to improve those. So I think it's another good way to be notified when there's problems in your automations. Let's add the battery state card then via Hacks into Home Assistant. If you haven't got Hacks installed, then watch my add-ons video, which I'll try and link in the top right hand corner. So we're going to open Hacks, search for the battery state card, select the card. You can have a whiz through there and have a look at all the cool stuff that it does. But we'll go into this in a little bit more detail. So you can select download, download the latest version, and then once that's done, we'll need to reload the browser. And that's it. That's uh, the card installed. Let's add the battery state card then to a dashboard. So we're going to settings, dashboards, and I've got my development dashboard, but obviously you can install this dashboard wherever you want. So we'll click on the new section, we'll search for the new battery card and select it and save it. And it's easy as that to, to add it, but we'll, what we'll need to do now is go on and configure it so it does what we want it to do. But essentially it's automatically added all of the batteries from my environment into this dashboard. Okay, so I'm gonna tweak the dashboard now just so it 
displays the batteries that I want to see. <clears throat> so by default, what you'll need to do is actually copy the YAML code from the battery card config page. So I'm just going to navigate back to into hacks, go to the battery state card, and then you need to scroll down and find the YAML code and copy this across. So if you just start making changes within the existing dashboard, then it, you'll break it. So you need to copy this YAML code across first, and then you can start to make changes to the YAML code on the left-hand side to reflect what you want. So for example, I've got my son's phone in there, which I don't really want. Um, so we'll get rid of that soon. But I'm just going to add a title to the, um, to the card itself. Obviously, you can do this and call it whatever you want. So you can see the my battery status title has appeared on the right hand side. Let's tidy up the battery card a little bit. So for example, I've got my son's mobile phone battery in there, which I'm not interested in seeing. So I'm going to add an exclude section for the entity for my son's battery. So you can see here I've added the entity ID for the phone and now it's disappeared from the right hand side so you can scroll through the card itself and decide which if any others you want to exclude to give you just the batteries that you want to see you can save that and can consume the board and the dashboard so i've just used this card to give me indications of how my batteries indications are but there's lots of other things that this card can be used for so we'll just have a look through the documentation really quickly obviously you can do this yourself but obviously we can monitor the battery levels we can look at changing the color and the different gradients so how to display the information differently And then this has got the RSSI, so you can actually see how well your different devices are performing on your network, hard disk temperatures, and motion detectors as well, which might be useful. So have a look through that and see if there's any others that you want to add to your, set, your dashboard as separate cards. Let's go ahead and get the Watchman installed then. So we're going to install this via Hacks. If you haven't got hacks installed, then follow my add-ons video in the link below, or maybe you've got a link on the screen. So go into hacks, we search for the watchman, and we can select it and have a quick whiz through the documentation. Click on download and download again, and we should get the hacks integration download ready for installation. Now you've probably seen some of these hacks integrations do require a restart. And this one does, so we'll just click on settings. You can see, see that a restart's required. So we'll click on that and restart Home Assistant. So now Home Assistant's back up and running. We're going to settings, devices, service, and integrations, and add the Watchman integration. Click on add integration, search for Watchman, and can select it and do the installation. Right, so now that integration is available for us to start making use of. So we're gonna to go to developer tools, actions, and type in Watchman. And the Watchman report will show us if anything needs to be addressed in our Home Assistant environment. So we're gonna access the report via file editor in this case, just so you can have a look at it in its most raw format, but we'll do some um, automations later to allow us to surface, surface this information. So you can see in my environment, I've got three issues. I've got a, a missing entity and a couple of integrations that aren't working properly. So in this section, we'll get a couple of dashboards set up for the watchman and an automation to notify us if there's any problems. So we'll go into the dashboards, I'll go into my development dashboard and I've got a, a new section that we can use to test these dashboards in. So I'm gonna be using 
the documentation, the Watchman documentation, and I'd re uh, recommend having a flick through here just to see what's available. So as I'm highlighting here, we can do persistent notifications. So you can get notifications popping up in your Home Assistant dashboard if any issues are found by the Watchman service. Uh, what we're going to do here is create a couple of dashboards that will notify us if there are any problems found. So we're using the Markdown card. And what we're going to do is just simply copy across the YAML information that is in the documentation. So there we can see there's one error found about my Sonos speaker. That I need to investigate. So there's a second dashboard that we can copy across as well. So we'll go back to the Watchman documentation, copy the YAML code, go into the code editor, paste that across, and we should be able to see on the right hand side the information it's going to give us. So now I've fixed those three issues that we saw earlier in the initial report. I have no outstanding problems um, with regard to any attributes. Um, that are used in my existing automations. So the last thing we'll do is we'll use the code again provided by the Watchman documentation and create an automation that will prompt me if any issues are found. So I'm going to run this um, automation based on a time trigger. So at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, I'm going to get the Watchman report issued. So I'm going to copy the persistent notification YAML code across into my new automation. So we're going to give the name, the automation a name, and then we can save it and give it a try and see how it works and the information that it gives us. We'll save that, run the action, and we can see in the notifications it's popped up and it's showing one missing notification. Thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. Hopefully you found it useful. So I've covered various ways that you can monitor your sensors and devices around the house. So I have had some issues with sensors going offline and becoming available. Um, batteries running out or running very low and not knowing about it and then the watchman I think is just a, a good add-on to make sure that your home assistant environment is nice nice and healthy um, I don't know about you out there but in, I, I have to work quite hard to make sure that the home assistant environment is working properly otherwise I get lots of um, complaints around the house so to have these additional things in, in place to help me monitor that is, is a big tick box for me. Um, so I've made this video as part of my series of getting started, but hopefully it's useful for everybody out there that's using Home Assistant. Um, I've been using Home Assistant for a few years now, so I'm still, still learning lots of new things and um, putting some content out there to, to share with people what I've learned. If you're finding the videos useful, then please like and subscribe. That would be great. There's only about 5% of the viewers out there are subscribed. So if you could like and subscribe, that'd be great. Helps me, helps the channel and motivates me to do more videos. Hopefully you enjoyed what I've produced today. Uh, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.